I welcome you warmly to this service of thanksgiving for the life of Mr. David Wooden. We have gathered to surround his family, his mother Noreen and his brother John, and the wider family with our love and prayers today. We have gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said these words, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We come with sorrow and grief in our hearts, but also with thanksgiving that God is with us to comfort and to help us and to strengthen us. Today we are faced with death like never before and our own mortality. And so as we gather here today, May we know that God is with us, Jesus who died and who rose again, the living God. We turn now to sing our opening hymn, which is on your order of service. So together we stand and sing, Near my God to Thee. Let us sing to God.
Father God, we draw near to you and we pray that you would draw near to us. And just as the sunlight shines into this meeting house today, we pray that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, would shine into all our hearts and dispel the darkness. Father God, we realize that a darkness came over this community several weeks ago when we heard about David and his terminal illness. And those grey clouds gathered over us and around us. And then on Wednesday night when we heard the news that David had died, we were cast into darkness. But today we gather in the light, knowing that Christ died and rose again, defeating sin and death, rising from the grave and offering new hope and new life and new beginnings, new hope. We thank you that in you, our loving God, there is life, there is light, and nothing can separate us from your love, not even death itself. So surround us today and surround this family, the Whitten family, with your love and assure them and us that nothing can separate us from your love. Our loving God, we thank you for Jesus, your Son, who came into this world and lived a life of compassion. And how he drew alongside people in their time of need. We think how he went to visit Mary and Martha when their brother died. And we know that the Lord Jesus feels our pain today. <coughs> that he was acquainted with our sufferings and our loss. And so in our grief, we turn to you today. We pray that you would come by your Holy Spirit and strengthen us and comfort us. We thank you for Jesus who comes alongside the broken hearted. And so may the living Lord Jesus be close to Nori, and to John, and to the family circle, to Julie, to Brett. Oscar and Lily, and all who feel the pain of David's death. Father God, as we worship you today, we are conscious that we are not the people we should be. We have fallen from your ways and from your standards. And so we pray you cleanse us from every sin, forgive us. How we have grieved you, we have failed you. So come by your Spirit and be present with us and free us from our sin and set our eyes on Jesus who went to the cross for us and shed his precious blood so that we could be forgiven. We focus our eyes on Jesus, the light of the world, and may we know his peace as we worship you today. And we join now in prayer as Jesus taught us and so we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today we're going to read three passages from God's Word. And first of all, from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 43. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. 
I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I have created for my glory, who I formed and made. And then some words from the Gospel of John. Mary and Martha had a brother called Lazarus, and he died. And we know what that's like. And Jesus came to their home. So we read in John chapter 10. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along were also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could he not have opened? He who opened the eyes of the blind man not have kept this man from dying. And then finally today, some words from the Apostle Paul is recorded in the book of Romans, chapter 8. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, and more than that, was raised to life, and is at the right hand of God, and is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or the sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, and we thank God for these readings from his word. We're going to stand and sing our second hymn today. God sent his son, they called him Jesus.
Gospel reading that many had come to comfort them in their loss. And isn't that why we have gathered here today? <coughs> many people have gathered to comfort you, Noreen and John, on the loss of your son and your brother. Many people have gathered to comfort you in your loss. Because you have lost someone that you loved. You have lost your son, you have lost your brother, your brother-in-law, your uncle, your cousin, your nephew. And we acknowledge that it is a loss because someone of that 52 should not die. It goes against the grain, doesn't it? And it is a loss. And we feed the loss and we surround you, Noreen and John and Julie, Brett, Oscar and Lily. You have all lost. You have lost a good son, Noreen. He was always there with you. And you were always there for him. You have lost a good brother, John. You have lost a good brother, Lord Julie. You have lost a good uncle uh, to Brett, Oscar and Lily. And cousins and aunts and uncles have lost a good nephew. And we want to take a few moments today to remember David's life. David was born here in Romiga just around 52 years ago to you, Noreen, and to your late husband, Joseph. Uh, he attended Romiga Primary School and then attended Castledare Secondary School. After David left school, he secured employment in SuperValue in Oma, a position I think he held for 30 years. And Joe brought David in and out to work. And then, uh, when sadly, when Joe died, David uh, started to thumb a lift, and I think that's where many people got to know David. He was a familiar figure on the roads in the morning and the evening, and sometimes even, I'm told David, he even walked uh, to Oma. It's long enough in a car, never mind walking, uh, but that was David. He was a familiar figure. He worked, as I said, at Super Value for 30 years, where he endeared himself to staff, to managers, to customers. And I was struck by that yesterday evening when I went on to social media and there was well over excess of a hundred comments where people were commenting how David was a great colleague, a great salesman in Super Value. And I think the strap line in Super Value, their slogan is real people, real food, or real food, real people. Well, David was a real person in there who got to know the customers and he was very popular and held in high regard. A uh, testament to the number of people here today that work with David or who David served as he worked there quietly. Uh, nothing was too much bother for David. I know the many of the time he helped me when I was sent up the list and he would know where to go and he would scoot up and down the aisles as quick and get you what you needed. Uh, he was nearly like a personal shopper, Nori. He could just give him the list and off he would go. Uh, so such was his care and dedication as a good employee. David was a good friend to his colleagues there. And I know there's many of them here today. And they feel the loss because they too have lost someone that they worked with for so long. David was also in the group band in Castle Eric, and again, many of his friends are uh, here today. Uh, David was a good neighbour. Uh, David never complained. I never heard him complain. Did you know him? No, I don't think David wasn't a complainer. So we're all here today to comfort you, Nori and John and the family. Many people have gathered to comfort Mary and Martha and many people have gathered here today to comfort you. And I hope you take courage and some encouragement and support today when you see the number of people here today that are with you and standing with you and to support you. Over recent weeks, David received that diagnosis that no one wanted and at such a young age to be diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer. But over those weeks, I've had time uh, to speak to him and to pray with him and to read God's word to him. David had time to prepare for eternity. And I trust Noreen and John that that gives you some comfort that David was prepared to leave the scene of earth, the scene of time, and to go to his maker. 
Just about a week ago, I asked David, we talked about this day because we knew this day was going to come. And I said to David, what would you like me to say to your mother and brother and to your family? And David didn't have to think about it. Very quickly he said to me, tell them that I love them and thank them for all their care. That's David. May that give you some comfort today, John and Lori. That he has found words for, for you and thank you for your love. I think it's appropriate at this stage that I mention uh, the exceptional care that David received at home. David didn't have to go into hospital or palliative care. He got exceptional care at home from you, Nori, and from Heather. And so the family today want me to thank you, Heather, publicly for the care and love that you gave to David. You went the extra mile to ensure that he stayed at home and that his final weeks and days were filled with dignity and respect. And so you as a family have nothing, to, you have no fear, you have no regrets. You did everything to ensure that David was well cared for and looked after. The family also want me to say thank you to everyone who supported them and uh, phoned and visited and called and offered help over the last number of weeks. And your support has meant so much to Lori and to Heather and to John and to Julie. Comfort is the first word. The second word that I have for you today is confusion. Mary and Martha lost their brother and they're confused. And did you pick their confusion up in the reading from John's Gospel? Mary and Martha both said to Jesus, If you had been here. Many of us have asked that question over recent weeks. Why, Lord? Why does someone so young have to be diagnosed with a terminal cancer? Why does someone have to suffer and be taken from us this way? Mary and Martha were trying to make sense of life. They were trying to deal with the question of pain and suffering. Maybe we have said, why Lord, if only. And we today are faced with suffering and the confusion. And Christianity does not avoid the hard subject of pain and suffering. And Mary and Martha made sense of it by going to Jesus. And life only makes sense, even with the hard questions of life in the difficult places, by turning to Jesus. And that's where Mary and Martha went. And that's where we need to go. Go to Jesus. In the tragic twists and turns of life, illnesses and death and other things can shape us. We need to go turn to Christ and he will give us the strength. Life can be confusing. Life is unfair at times. Life is uncertain. There is confusion. <coughs> so we need to turn to Christ. That's where Mary and Martha turned. And so the next word that I leave with you today is the word compassion. Mary and Martha experienced Christ's compassion. Did you notice the shortest verse in the Bible? Jesus wept. He felt their pain. And he feels your pain today. He feels our pain today. Because Christ is not aloof. He's with us. And he understands us. And he knows that life is unfair. And he is concerned. He's more than concerned. He is compassionate. Jesus wept. Such was his care for Mary and Martha. And such is his care for you, Nori and John. He understands your loss. And we don't have to go through this on our own. Yes, we have other people to comfort us, but at a time like this, we need the Lord. We need the Lord to help us. He is the one who can bring relief to our brokenness. He is the one who can bring hope into our despair. He is the one who can bring light into our darkness. And it was Jesus who said these words, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live, even though they die. Whoever believes in him will live, 
Because there is life after death for those who believe in Jesus. And that is our Christian hope. And that is why we meet here today. Because Christ died on the cross to take away our sin. There was no one else to do that. No one else will die for you but Christ did. And Christ rose from the grave. Offering us new life and new hope. Living he loved us. Dying, he saved us. Buried, he carried our sins far away. Rising again, he justified us freely forever. Jesus is compassionate. And it's to Jesus that we turn today. Jesus is the one who can draw alongside us. And he is the one who can help us in our grief, in our loss, and in our pain. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And he said to Martha, do you believe this? And that's the question I pose to every one of us here today in church. Do you believe this? Do you believe in Jesus who died for your sins? Do you believe in Jesus who rose from the dead again? Do you believe this? And when we believe in Jesus and truly trust in him in a personal way, then we can look forward to being with him at home in heaven. And so today, our three words, comfort. Jesus is the one who will comfort us. Jesus is the one who comes into our confusion. And finally, Jesus is the one who is full of compassion and gracious and invites us to come to him and to trust our lives into his care. And as we do that, he will lead us on. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> o God, our Heavenly Father, we gather today with our memories of David Whitten. We take a moment in silence to remember David. Maybe it's a son, a brother, a brother-in-law, an uncle, a nephew, a cousin. A work colleague, a band member, a neighbour, a friend. We pray for David's family, his mother Nori, his brother John, sister in law Julie, for Brett and Oscar and Lily, his nieces, niece and nephews, for his aunts and his cousin, especially Heather, who cared for him with such love over recent weeks. Help them at this sad time. May they know your comfort and your compassion. We remember the words of Jesus who said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. So in the midst of their grief and pain, would you grant to them your peace today? May they know the reality of your love, that nothing can separate them from your love. And Lord, now as we sing our final hymn in a few moments and go to the graveyard and then go to the hall for tea, we thank you for the tea and refreshments that have been provided. And as we share with one another, may we comfort one another and may you be a draw alongside us to comfort us and to sustain us. So thank you for the food that has been provided. And in the days that come, keep this family in your love watch over them and us and help each one of us to live for you knowing that one day our death will come and we just wonder what will be said about us and may it be said that we were someone who loved the Lord who believed in Jesus and knew his love and grace so hear us as we pray because we pray in our Saviour's name. Amen. We stand to say our final come, safe in the arms of Jesus.
church hall. And uh, after the family will have time to have some tea, there will be an opportunity to meet with them. Uh, if you don't want to go to the committal, you can make your way straight through these doors and through the boy and into the hall and tea will be served for you and uh, we will join you very shortly. But as we go now to take Mr. David Whitten on his final earthly journey to his final resting place here on earth, we pray that as we go that we would know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit with us. Amen.